Hello. We're here in Atlanta with the Collegiate Licensing Company, um, based here in Atlanta, obviously. And I'm sitting here with uh, Malika Underwood, um, who is a U Director of University Services here. Um, Malika, um, from what I understand, uh, the Collegiate Licensing Company uh, was uh, founded in 1981 by Bill Battle in Alabama with, uh, with Paul Bear Bryant, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, this is a southern company from Alabama, based here in Atlanta. You're not from the South. <laughs> no, I'm not. How did you end up here? Uh, it's, a, it's a long story, but uh, to, to make it more enjoyable to listen to it a little shorter, I went to the University of North Carolina. I played volleyball there. I actually got my master's degree there, and after I finished my master's, I started working in fundraising. Okay. And I was doing that for a little while. And one of the territories that I was responsible for was Atlanta. And I would come down here, and I actually met my boyfriend, moved down here, and was looking for a job. And through the connections that I had made in grad school and through work, I was um, uh, made aware of a position here working with uh, the ACC clients. So it was sort of a good fit, and I applied and was uh, accepted and, and became the ACC University Services Rep. And so I worked with just our ACC clients at that time. That was two and a half years ago now, time flies. Um, and since then, I've added a few more clients to my account management list, uh, okay. but still work with our ACC clients. Okay. All right, so um, getting you in this position was part, you know, your education and experience, mm -hmm. but your networking capabilities is really what helped you out quite a bit. Absolutely. And when I, when I first moved down to Atlanta, I think um, that's what I relied on more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like, there are a lot of people with really good resumes, right. but to get your foot in the door, um, it was it was great to have very good contacts back in North Carolina who could reach out to somebody at Georgia Tech or reach out to somebody here in this company and uh, give me uh, a you know, good word of mouth, and and then that's what inevitably got me this job. Okay. Yeah. In my experience, I I can say the same thing that it's definitely who you know. Um, Malika, you had a, a pretty uh, respectable sports career yourself. Um, you played um, you played with volleyball for University of North Carolina. Yes. Yes. I um, did. it's pretty funny, guys. I walk into her office and she has this big framed picture in her office of. Uh, UNC beating University of Illinois 70 to 75. Um, yeah, I wish she had taken that down. Um, Malika, you also play on the, uh, the National Women's Baseball League. Yes, I do. Yeah, how, how, how was that? Um, I actually played baseball my entire life. I started at five years old playing Little League Baseball. Played through high school, actually played on the boys team in high school. Um, a lot of people tried to, to tell me that I should play softball because there are more opportunities, obviously, for girls right. playing softball. Um, but I didn't want to play softball, and, and, and in my mind, and you can ask most people, softball and baseball are very different sports. Right. And so I continued to play baseball, but I picked up volleyball and basketball while I was in high school, mm -hmm. and obviously was provided a really good opportunity to go to the University of North Carolina on a volleyball scholarship, um, and did so in turn kind of giving up baseball for a, for a little while, but when I was in school, I decided to start coaching Little League. Coached Little League, loved it, did that for six years, and then was really starting to miss playing baseball because that's always been my first love. So right. I um, just happened to be looking online one day and saw that the USA uh, baseball team was having open tryouts. Mm -hmm. and so why don't I go try it out? I mean, I haven't played in a while, but I haven't been too far away from the game. so. Tried out, made the 2016, and then we also played in uh, the World Cup in 2008. Made that team, right? And so, and you won the whole you won the whole thing one year, right? 2006, we won the gold medal. Uh, last year in 2008, we won the bronze medal, which was very disappointing for us. And I think it's tough because <clears throat> the way USA Baseball does it, we um, they they field the team and then train for only a few days, and then we go to the tournament. Right. But Japan and Canada and all these countries are investing so much more. In their, in their women's baseball programs, right. that they, they've got teams playing together for months at minimum, sometimes years together. Mm -hmm. So we're competing, we're, we're just as talented, if not more talented in the game, mm -hmm. but we're not gelled as a team like some of these teams right, are. Right. And so I think we're starting to see that play out, and I think we did in 2008, fall a little short, not because of lack of talent, right. but instead because of lack of, I guess, team.
keenness. Right, right, so, right. Um, yeah, it's, it's very different. It's very, very different. And most people don't know about USA women's baseball. I mean, we play on the same field, right. 300 feet down the line, uh-huh. 90 feet to the bases, 60 feet, 6 inches to the pitching mound. So. Okay, okay. Now that you even um, mentioned that, I'll go ahead and ask you, because I didn't plan on talking about it, but, um, you know, as a female playing in collegiate sports, um, how did you feel about that? gender equity or fairness um, compared to the guys' programs? And was there a difference uh, once you got with the U.S. Uh, baseball team? I, I do think so. I think in college um, they make an effort to make things equal, and they have to for right. Title IX. Right, right. And, that, and that same Title IX does affect a sport like USA Baseball, but because, um, because it's not as – as closely watched, it's not you don't see the same pressures to make things equal for USA Baseball. Right. As long as they're doing something, mm-hmm. they're they feel like they've covered what they need to cover. Right. So so they host you know one tournament every they don't even host it they enter us into one tournament every two years, um, which is not the same that they do for men. But they feel like it's the one big tournament. There are other teams, so they've done what they needed to do. Right. In college sports, you know. Title IX is a big issue, and they, they make sure that women's sports get the same number of scholarships, that mm-hmm. they're treated the same, that they have the same facilities, you know, the same coaching or level of coaching. So I, I do think that uh, it changed once I came out. And I think, I think my, my college experience was absolutely wonderful. Okay, awesome. <coughs> so, all right, another victory for uh, North Carolina. <laughs> I spent some time in North Carolina myself at Morris Hill College, too, so that's pretty cool. Um, tell us a little bit about what um, the Collegiate Licensing Company does. I, I think some of the colleagues back in Illinois and around the country aren't really uh, familiar with what licensing is all about and uh, what brand management, uh, brand protection, trademark um, enforcement, and so forth. Sure. Um, when The short answer I give people when they ask me what I do is that we market and protect college logos. In essence, a college has rights to their marks, to their word marks and to their logos. So our company works with schools, with our clients, to protect those rights. Um, They federally register marks, and they also register them within the state that they're in. And so they have the rights to use these uh, in commerce and whatnot. In turn, they choose to license companies shirt companies, hat companies, non-apparel companies, to use their logos on products. In, in, um, for that license, a company has to pay a royalty. Right. So usually the royalty is anywhere from, at this time, 8 to 10%. Depending on the school, they all set their own policies. Right. But the, the royalty rate will be 8 to 10% that the company pays on the wholesale price of a product back to the school. Mm-hmm. And these schools use that for scholarship money, um, some use it, East School uses it differently, but usually it's for scholarships or for um, like the athletic department um, or auxiliary services, wherever they decide to use it. So we collect that money, that royalty for them, and then give it back to the university. It makes it a lot easier for, for the university so they're not getting checks from 300 different companies who have a license. Right. Everybody sends the money to us, and then we send the university one check. Okay. In turn, because we protect it, because we're collecting royalties, it helps if we market it as well. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that the University of North Carolina or Illinois is getting as much exposure as they can and that every fan that wants to buy a product with that can get the product they want. Okay. So we do a lot in terms of um, working with retailers and coming up with um, marketing schemes to try and push college as a whole, almost like a Got Milk, right? right. They've the, the milk company said, we need more people to drink milk, mm-hmm. and it's not about just our milk, it's about milk in general, right. so it's not just about these colleges, it's about people wearing college, no matter what college it is. Right. So we've created things like College Colors Day. Mm-hmm. At the beginning of every football season, we celebrate College Colors Day, and we encourage our, our universities to celebrate College Colors Day, and we, we do commercials, we do radio stuff, and so all that stuff.